Every autumn, a miracle happens here. A monarch born in Canada in late summer will fly all the way to Mexico across 5,000 kilometers of land it has never seen. Nothing about a monarch makes it seem capable of an epic quest. It is truly a magic creature. All the way it will be dodging threats, relying on inherited genius. The great mystery is how they do it. Monarchs live all over the world, in Australia, Hawaii, the Canary Islands. Only North American monarchs migrate so far, because only they have the motive. Their species cannot survive the freezing temperatures in late summer. Especially a monarch born in Canada. Its parents lived for a month. So did its grandparents, and its great-grandparents. Those generations spent that month flying north, all the way from Mexico, across America. But the evolutionary clock that governs the species dictates that this monarch, the fourth generation, will live for almost a year. A monarch's wing spread is 10 centimeters and it weighs half a gram. Its flight to Mexico is like a person circling the earth 11 times on foot. So now it eats milkweed, poisonous to every other animal, including humans. A frog that tries to eat a monarch will retch. A bird will have a heart attack. But a monarch caterpillar can eat 3,000 times its weight in milkweed. Monarchs survive by bending common reality.
Three weeks inside the cocoon, the caterpillar is gone, dissolved into a stew of genes that brews up a new being. The nibbling jaws are now a long tube. Twelve beady eyes have melded to become two. Now there are antennae, sex organs, and most joyfully, wings. Four of them. The reborn monarch must wait two hours for its wings to harden. And then, finally, it can fly. Monarchs are ruled by the sun. When they wake in the morning, they fly east to bask in its warmth before going their own way. They never fly after sunset. And it's the sun that signals their migration. There comes an autumn day when it only rises 52 degrees above the horizon. That is always the day that the exodus begins.
A monarch can only fly when conditions are perfect. Too cold, and it gets sleepy. Too hot, and it gets sick. It must nectar constantly, but every time it lands, there's trouble. Awaiting the monarchs in Mexico are the Mazahua, who lived here long before the Spanish conquered. The Mazahua believe that butterflies come from another world, and they prepare a proper welcome. Es una etapa del año que que se viene cada etapa de del año. Este, cambia, cambia el ambiente, hasta la aromita cambia. No, pues las mariposas siempre aquí rodeados bajaban muchas y rodeados siempre andaban aquí haciendo también, este, pues ahora sí, como dándole el último toque de, de la tradición del Día de Muertos. La creencia de nosotros, este, aquí, cuando de, de que yo era niña, este, pues llegaban las mariposas y decíamos que eran las almas de nuestros difuntos, pero este, pues ya ve que hasta trae este color, trae este color, las mariposas, o sea, se, se dejan venir hasta acá y decimos, no, pues es que sí anda aquí el alma de mi abuelito, de mi mamá, teníamos prohibido agarrar hasta que pasara el día de muertos, entonces ya. Cada año prendo mis veladoras. Porque significa que eso, cuando ellos estuvieron en vida, eso era lo que les gustaba. Entonces, por eso es que se les espera con esa su ofrenda, supuestamente de ellos. Las leyendas de la gente que vive cerca del mar, las leyendas de la gente que vive cerca de las montañas, Es, es importante para ellos y, y para nosotros el sentido del espacio, la libertad de, 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 de volar, de volar con la imaginación y volar como mariposa también. Ojalá que el, la, la resurrección del invierno, que simboliza la mariposa monarca, pueda durar miles y miles y miles de años. Homero Erigis is one of Mexico's best-loved writers. He grew up in these hills and has fought to preserve them for monarchs. For this, he's loved and also hated. His friend Lincoln Brower is America's leading monarch biologist. When you were a young boy, Homero, yes. did you used to go up to see the butterflies? Yes, several years we came with the school children, and for us it was one of the most fantastic spectacles of the year. 
to go to the, the plane of the mule to see the butterflies. But the butterflies also came to the to town. They were across the streets. They flew through the town. Exactly. They were looking for water. Sometimes there was in your house. But there were millions of butterflies. And for us, it was a spontaneous miracle to see butterflies here in the, in the Cerro Altamirano. But we didn't know that they were coming from Canada, across the United States. And the Canadians and Americans didn't know that they, they were coming to these places. These mountains are a sanctuary to monarchs because their old growth forests have a unique climate. But the giant trees in these forests also attract loggers. We're talking constantly about this microclimatic envelope, about 3,100 meters, usually on southwest facing slopes. If you imagine the forest as a blanket, that protects the butterflies by keeping the heat in, and also think of it as an umbrella that keeps the rain out. And the tree is like a hot water bottle. It's radiating heat out through the bodies of the butterflies. So when the temperature drops down really low, you'll see millions of monarchs just festooning these beautiful trunk clusters. If you think about it, the bigger the tree, the more heat it holds. So this is an argument for maintaining the forest in its native state, to let the trees get as big as they can, and the butterflies will be protected during those cold periods. The first time I saw those butterflies, I knew that the butterflies depended upon the forest and that the whole forest was endangered. We know where monarchs migrate because they're tracked by thousands of amateur biologists. Don Davis has been one since he was a child. I was interested in finding a science fair project for high school and became really fascinated with this amazing migration. After the overwintering sites were discovered in January of 1975, I thought it would be a really neat experience to tag a butterfly here in Ontario and have it recovered in Mexico. One of the remarkable aspects of this project is the fact that one doesn't have to be a highly trained scientist to participate and to make a significant contribution. Among those that have been involved in the project are Boy Scouts, school teachers, senior citizens. Don's day job is counseling troubled youths. But butterflies are his passion and the reason for his fame. I understand I'm the individual that has had the most tagged monarchs uh, recovered at the overwintering site in Mexico. I also hold a record in the Guinness Book of Records for the longest migration by a butterfly. To reach Michoacan before winter, a monarch has to fly at least 80 kilometers a day. We don't know how many make it. 100,000 monarchs are tagged every year. 
Only 200 tags are found, about 40 of them in Mexico. Butterflies are the worst possible body form for trying to make a long distance migration. They're simply a bad design. But every time they flap their wings, they're using energy at least 20 times the rate than when they're not flapping it. So they're just burning their fuel up at a great rate, much like say a helicopter might. And so they have to compensate for their inadequacies by soaring. Soaring is gliding in rising air, much like I'm doing right now. The sun heats the ground, the ground heats the air above it. As the air heats, it expands and becomes lighter and begins to rise. And pretty soon you have a column of rising air. That's the thermal. Under good conditions, you can maintain the altitude you're at or even gain altitude. A more helpful maneuver is to circle in it. And you see hawks doing this and vultures doing this all the time. Circling in the thermal, staying within it. And this seems like a wonderful free ride, and it is. Soaring's the key to them getting to Mexico. The monarch's sense of where they should go is absolute. When wind pushes them off their course, they land, often in flocks so big they become a weather pattern. Doppler weather radar has now allowed us to see not only the motions of uh, raindrops and snowflakes and how they're changing and moving in, with time uh, on the radar screen, but also uh, large uh, migrations of birds, a large swarm of insects, or in fact the, uh, the monarchs migrating. I'm quite frankly amazed that uh, an insect the size of a monarch butterfly, uh, knowing the types of weather patterns that they can encounter, the types of very intense low pressure systems uh, that could be packing very strong winds, that could have driving rains, uh, the fact that they would know enough to stop at a certain location when the winds wouldn't be favorable and wait until they do get the wind shift that's going to help them get across a large body of water uh, or a large area of land, it, it's quite frankly amazing. On the shores of the Great Lakes, a monarch will wait a week or more until it senses a wind with the strength to carry it over dozens of kilometers with nowhere to land.
In Machurka now, they wait and they pray. Bueno, digo yo que en los pueblos de México, se entra a los pueblos de México por el, por el cementerio, por la muerte. Entonces cuando yo vengo al pueblo, lo primero que veo es la, las tumbas de mis padres, el cementerio. Es lo primero que veo. Pero curiosamente ellos murieron, los dos, en 1986. Y ese fue un año en que se logró el decreto de protección de los cinco santuarios en México. Por eso creo en la resurrección de los muertos en forma de seres vivos como las mariposas. And I was really desperate to get a commitment of the government to protect the hill of my town because the hills were threatened everywhere where you saw the butterflies flying now you see people blogging I remember clearly it was April 29, 1986 I was with the Minister of the Environment and I, I said why in the government doesn't give to the Mexican children a big present, the monarch butterfly sanctuaries. And he called me in the, uh, the evening and said, the president agrees, I make the announcement, I, I read a letter of the president to the uh, children of Mexico declaring protected areas, the monarch butterfly sanctuaries. <laughs> El privilegio que nos dio Dios de mandarnos estos insectos por acá. Los meses que está la mariposa aquí nosotros nos beneficiamos con, o sea, para nuestro sobrevivir, ¿no? Porque pues la verdad pues tenemos un ejido, eh, se puede decir que pobre, ¿no? En cuanto llega la mariposa nos organizamos, formamos comité, la gente... Se apunta quién va a ser guía, quién va a ser guía de caballos y para la taquilla, ¿no? Para cobrar las entradas, el estacionamiento y todo eso. Nosotros en, en esta temporada pues ganamos, se puede decir que bien para ir sobreviviendo, ¿no? No es mucho dinero, pero lo tenemos seguro. It official decree was October the 9, 1986. Then October 14, the Ministry of Agriculture gave uh, permits to lock in the sanctuaries. Since 86, we are fighting every year against the forces of destruction in the area. It's like, you see all these trees, Lincoln? Yeah. Before there were hundreds and thousands, and now you can count to them. And then they're all... You see, the... very tall and very wide. Yeah. And wherever you look, and look, yeah. you, you see the presence of loggers. Yeah. Let's, let's, let, let's see how old this tree is, Samira. And using that as fuel to cook, for example. Yeah. Using this wood, this uh, 200 years old tree, to, to, to cook in a house, for example, to use it like fuel. Yeah. I am going to speak in Spanish. Una de las imágenes más terribles que tengo en mi memoria de los santuarios era un hombre que se llamaba el coronel Mondragón, que arrojaba los camiones con árboles cortados a las mariposas que estaban en el suelo en los senderos, y cortaba los árboles con eh, todo y mariposas. Entonces me di cuenta que había gente violenta, que odiaba las mariposas, que mataba las mariposas. Then for me was an image of the human beast.
If a migrating butterfly stops for love, it will never reach Mexico. When monarchs mate, they hold each other all night long. When they part, it's forever. The female will lay 400 eggs, and soon after, they both will die. Monarchs that started out in the Rocky Mountains now gather with those from the Atlantic coast, swarming in ever larger groups, soaring toward a sanctuary that is drastically shrinking. The further they fly, the harder it goes. Flowering fields are stripped away. Wetlands are paved over. Toxins rain down. Butterflies are harmless and nobody wants to kill them. They're collateral damage, like children in war.
They're probably always going to be monarchs as long as we have a planet, because there's a lot of little outlier populations. But this magnificent migration that we have in eastern North America uh, could vanish. It could collapse. It's their tenacity, charm, and mystery, more than their beauty, that inspires people to fight for monarchs. Chip Taylor began his work by wondering how they map the world in their heads. We've got a butterfly that's originating in Toronto, or it's originating in, in Point Pelee, or it's originating in Detroit, Michigan. It's coming down from St. Paul, it's maybe even Winnipeg, and it's, it's moving south. And somehow it finds its way to Mexico. Could you do that? We ran some experiments a few years ago. So we took butterflies and we transferred them to Washington, D.C. And initially, when we released them in Washington, D.C., they behaved as if they were still in Kansas. But when we left them there a week, then they behaved more like the local butterfly. Now, this is really exciting stuff because what this says is that somehow this butterfly is acquiring celestial information perhaps magnetic information, and it's integrating those and remodeling the physiology of the system to have a different vector, to have a different direction from where it came from. Now, that's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, that's okay. And so now you need to tell whether or not it's a male or a female. And so this picture shows a male. So you can see there's two little, there's little dots right there. And are there any over here? Nope. So you know that one's a girl. So let's check out your butterfly and see what it is. What do you think it is? I started Monarch Watch in 1992 uh, because Monarch population was really weighed down in 1992. and. It seemed that uh, many of the questions associated with monarchs hadn't been answered, but it also appeared that the public was not engaged with monarchs. Okay, just set it right in there. If we're going to conserve monarch butterflies, you have to have a constituency to do it. You have to have an educated public that's aware of the plight of monarch butterflies. Let her go. <laughs> Most of us know about life and death in the wild, but it's abstract. I'm following this butterfly really closely, and I see it. I see their life and death. And I see these monarchs arriving at the overwintering sites with broken wings, battered wings. And those butterflies that you see flying around here, they're putting on a lot of miles, not just in a linear flight, but just wherever they're roosting, wherever they're nectaring, and so on and so forth. So in terms of total energy expenditure to get to this site, it's astonishing. I mean, it's really a magnificent biological phenomenon. And it gets to me every time I see it. It really gets to me. It gets to me. I connect with it. That's all I can say. <laughs> We're talking about hundreds of hectares of forest being leveled and then burned. I have been told the reason they burn them after they log them is to destroy the evidence that they cut them, which sort of eludes my thinking completely. Even this small scale logging operation is destroying the capacity of the monarchs to use those sites. There's so few trees left, and even if they did sit on the ones that were left, they'd freeze to death. In January of 2002, there was a massive storm that came off the Gulf of Mexico, and in that storm, we knew that a quarter of a billion butterflies were killed.
on the eve of the Day of the Dead in Michoacan. They wait, leaning on their faith, listening for magic wings. Thousands of swarms of monarchs gather for the final flight south. I just saw the shadow of it. For 25 years, zoologist Bill Calvert has wandered these lands in autumn, checking on the health of the migration. Well, this is perfect, <laughs> except for one thing. No butterflies here. An endangered phenomenon would not be uh, the same as an endangered species. In the case of an endangered species, of course, we worry about all the members uh, disappearing. In the case of an endangered phenomenon, uh, we're worried that the migration would be reduced to such a state that uh, it would be unnoticeable, or maybe even the migration itself would disappear. Chances of getting this are about zero. All right. Well, it's in pretty good shape. It's, uh, it's got a couple of pieces missing out of a wing over here, but otherwise it's in pretty good shape. There he goes. Off to Mexico. I mean, the predictions are that this is going to be the lowest population ever. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, wow. Is our lucky day? Look at him up there. My God. It's just fantastic. <laughs> well, there are hundreds of thousands passing us right now. Before they can rest, the flock still faces the last, most difficult part of the journey. They must fly 1,000 kilometers across scorching desert and the towering Sierra Madre. Something has to focus them. I think the Sierra Madre mountains serve that purpose. The mountains stick up pretty high, the butterflies encounter them, and they turn and they follow the mountains, and they can follow the mountains for 900 miles.
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, And so to sleep, huddling for warmth, hoarding their energy, the monarchs cling to the pines for five months. When spring arrives, the monarchs bloom again. They tilt their wings to bounce sun onto their backs, warming up for flight. They'll ride the rising summer breeze as far north as Texas. There, they will stop to mate. Once more, the ancient cycle will be renewed.
difuntos ya se fueron, ya la fiesta terminó, se van, pero tenemos la esperanza de que van a volver. Pues ya nos damos cuenta de que este es un don que tenemos eh, y que nosotros lo debemos de cuidar porque no en todas partes llega las mariposas. Every autumn, a miracle happens here. Long dead souls return to these hills, borne on magic wings. It has been this way for as long as people remember. Let this not be the year the old magic is destroyed.